In my previous episode you saw a cheap Chinese front suspension for the Xiaomi M365, which I do not recommend anyone. It's a waste of money, it doesn't work. Today we're going with the rear suspension and that will be the Konik one. Most probably I just killed the name of that suspension. Here it is. It's the first thing I have ever ordered from Ukraine. So let's take a look. The package looks undamaged, nice. Okay, we have a bubble wrap. So that's the name. Konik, Konike, whatever the correct way of pronouncing the name. I really like that they have a logo and they print it and write it down on this box. We got more bubble wrap. Every component is individually packed which makes sure they don't get scratched. Okay, there is a little tiny bit of scratch on the paint here. Everything was packed really nicely and came without any transportation damage. This part has a little tiny scratch on paint here. I don't even know where it's getting installed and if I will be able to see the scratch and I don't really care to be honest, but that's a small downside. So for packaging, I would give eight out of 10. Why eight out of 10? Because I think I would take minus two points for all of this single use plastic that could be replaced by paper, you know, saving our planet being more green, but nothing major in this. The, the stuff arrived in one piece, actually in one, two, three, four, in many pieces. Let's take a look what did we get. I will need to drill a four millimeter hole in here so that I can install this bracket. I've been doing this for the last 10 minutes or so already. So when I'm installing the bottom bolt of the shock absorber, I had to find my own washer and put it there. Otherwise, even with one washer, you can see that the bolt is protruding to the other side, right here, right? Meaning I won't be able to tighten it completely and it will be moving back and forth, even if I tighten it to the max. And I believe it will cause some rattling noise, which I really don't like. So I'll just use a couple of my own washers here. It's not a major deal, but still I think a point for improvement. Just wanted to show what I did with the cable. So I soldered in a new wire here. I made it longer. I used one, two, and three zip ties here to put the cable like this. I'm going to put sealant and close the lid. And basically that means that installation will be done. The brake cable is working as well. It was long enough. I will also add sealant here where the brake cable enters the scooter. And I guess the installation is over.
All right, as you can see, the peg or the kickstand or whatever you want to call it, it's actually too short. And this is the longer one, which came with the front suspension. Uh, so I need to use a curb now to be able to park my scooter because the deck, both with the rear and the front suspension is really, really high. I think it's a benefit when you want to ride up the curb and so on, but I will have to figure out something with the kickstand because it's not working now. As you can see, the white scooter is actually even hitting the curb before the wheel goes on. And the black one, you can just roll on the curbs without worrying to bump it somewhere. I will try and adjust the suspension. It's pretty easy to do. You just need to have a normal mountain bike shock pump uh, where you can see actually how much pressure it is in the shock. And you need to take off this little cap, attach the pump to it. So this is, I think this is the best part about the suspension that it has this air shock, which is adjustable with the pressure and you can really make it fit your body weight. If you are a heavy guy, you know, you will need one pressure. If you are a child or if you are a teenager, if you have lighter body weight, you will need much less, but it's fully adjustable. This is awesome. I think the suspension is great. And the best part of it is the air shock, which is also one of the more expensive parts. So if you buy it with a simple spring shock, the suspension costs around 90 euros and you need to add, I believe, around 60 extra euros, making it 150 euros for the rear suspension with the air shock. So this is the one I really recommend to get if you have uh, spare money and if you're willing to invest it for the rear suspension. It makes riding experience much better, much softer. I believe you can do jumps and drops from different places and with much more confidence that there will be less impact for both your knees and the battery of the scooter. And overall, it feels the ride is much softer. It increases your ride height significantly. There is this part which is sticking out and you need to watch out when you're going up on the curbs so that that doesn't hit. If this hits, it will stop your scooter and you will most probably fall over the bars, which none of us would like to do, right? Another issue that I have is the kickstand. So there was nothing in the set that came together in order to solve this issue. Now the kickstand, which is already longer than the stock one, is like, I don't know, four or five centimeters too short and I cannot use, I cannot put my scooter in the standing position. So that's one of the drawbacks. Another downside, I don't like how this cable is now. While I made the rear brakes work, nothing is touching and the brakes are working. I feel that this cable is really stretched both here and, and at the front of the scooter. You can see that this brake cable is really stretched here. And if I turn right all the way, it kind of is pulling on the brakes, I guess, at the back. So it's, it's, it's another issue that you have to solve. You basically need a longer brake hose, brake cable. I had doubts if 10 inch tires would fit underneath the fender and they do, as you can see, there is no issues with that. 10 inch tire can be used. 
But I'm actually considering now to use the 8.5, maybe with a solid, maybe solid tires, the solid rubber ones, so I don't get any more punctures. I believe that with this suspension, solid tires could work pretty well. And I guess I'm going to try it, make a new video and let you know about it. If you wanna see it, be sure to subscribe to the channel. One more downside that is here is the longer rear light cable. You need a longer rear right cable. I managed to snap it during the first test right now because it was in the wrong position and I hit it at the corner of the stair and it just cut it off. So it's also not included in the set. You need to get yourself a longer wire and most probably you will need to, you know, to run it through the side somewhere here. I will try and figure out what is the better way of running this cable through so it doesn't snap one more time for me. One unexpected benefit that I found is that now I have like a lot more space here at the back of the scooter, meaning I can stand further from the steering bar and it, it makes my ride actually more comfortable. I can also comfortably put more weight back on here, taking out the risk if I break suddenly or if I hit, or if I hit some obstacle with the front uh, wheel to flip over. So that's kind of unexpected benefit. So my overall evaluation, I would say it's around 8 out of 10. I give full 8 just for the function, because the function of the suspension works as it should. It dampens the shock both ways when it contracts and, with, and when it expands. It's adjustable, so you can make it work for you whatever body weight you have. It has enough of travel for bigger jumps and smaller vibrations. And the design, I think it's, it's all right. I don't like the disc, the old disc brake mount that stays here. It kind of looks a bit weird. So I think it looks much better if you look it from that side and not look from the other one. Now, why cannot I give 10 out of 10 points? As I mentioned, there is a, you know, you need actually a longer disc brake cable. You need to prolong the rear light cable and you need to figure out something with the kickstand. So there are three things that are not included in the set and you as a user are just left with, you know, figure out what you're going to do with that. It's not a big issue, but it is a, still an issue. And there is one more. So I didn't bring it with me right now, but you saw there is this like a 3D printed hook, which you can attach on this red part here, actually on this side. And then when you fold your scooter, you would be able to attach it to this folding lock mechanism so you can carry your scooter in the folded position. Now, I didn't install it because if you just put it as it's designed right now, it will be wobbling and making extra noise on your scooter. I'm not really carrying it in the folded position anywhere, so that's not an issue for me, but that can be a pretty big issue for someone who is taking his scooter on the bus or to the office or other places where he needs to take it in uh, where he needs to carry it folded. So there are four small things which are not deal breakers, but still some opportunities for improvement of this product. I hope that you like this video. You can vote with your thumbs up or thumbs down buttons. You can drop your comments down in the comments below. I always try to answer them. And you can subscribe if you want to see more content coming towards electric scooters and electric bikes. Thank you all for watching.